All right. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to a new expert talk, Beyond Frames by Mr. Specs. Back on my side, I have the great Mirko Kasper, co-CEO of Mr. Specs. Happy to have you back on my side. Um, furthermore, we have Daniel, Daniel, I'm so sorry, Djordjevic, I hope I pronounced correctly, uh, CEO and co-founder of Genie Eyewear, an independent Stockholm-based brand that combines directional design with everyday function. Hello. Hi. Good to have you. And last but not least, wonderful Kira Stachovic. She's a co-founder and editor-in-chief of the amazing indie magazine, which I'm a great fan of, um, a Berlin-based independent magazine for cutting-edge fashion, music, opinion, and culture. Hi, Kira. Hi, thanks so much for having me. So good to have you all on board. And today we want to talk about independent eyewear brands, another success story. So independent brands is a term that comes up more and more often, I think. So Mirko at Mr. Specs, you offer these kind of labels alongside regular ones. Could you maybe first explain what that term exactly means? I, I come from it from the from the wider perspective, and that maybe defines also what I think uh, the term resembles. I mean, if you if you if you look at consumers today, while the big global fashion brands they're they're obviously enormously powerful, but but uh, uh, but the ones that are the fashion brands that are a bit in the middle that are. Um, have a pretty traditional approach are are not uh, positioned around a core idea about a, a meaningful story or or maybe even purpose uh, they are struggling quite a bit and, and then you have those new and up and coming brands that 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 have authenticity that try to uh, to resemble a lifestyle uh, create a relationship to the consumers and they can because uh, the internet allows them, right? Uh, and a lot of those independent brands that we've been watching, you know, we're, we're, we're using that direct to consumer angle to, to, to build that connection to the community and, 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 and form a brand around an idea. Um, and, and, and since, those are not licensed, and they 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 design their own stuff, and they they um, and they are independent and don't belong to a conglomerate. I would call them indie indie brands, and and um, and uh, and last not least, uh, I think uh, it resonates with us as a consumer quite a bit because we think this stuff is just incredibly interesting from a consumer point of view. And the other is uh, uh, we just want to give them as a, uh, as a retailer, we want to give them a platform, right? Because uh, so they can build the brand and leverage their brand also through wider distribution across Europe. So that's maybe a long intro, what I think, uh, uh, what we think indie brands are. It was a pretty good intro, I think. <laughs> so um, Daniel, you have been on the market with Jimmy for only two years, I think. How were you able to establish the brand in such a short time? Like what makes Jimmy so special? Uh, I mean, we looked at ourselves and obviously from our own perspective and as a consumer, I thought that the, uh, the uh, I were seen was pretty old school and not too internet oriented five or six years ago. And we have been on the German market for two years, but we have been live uh, for five years. So so <clears throat> Charlie, my co-founder, used to work as a stylist and as a um, fashion writer in Sweden. Uh, so as a stylist, he pretty much felt limited to black, gray, and brown frames that were super expensive coming from the high-end brands or the cheaper ones coming from H&M and Zara. So <clears throat> we kind of... We kind of wanted to, to give the customer something different that could uh, pretty much claim or offer the same quality and authenticity as the other brands do, but at a, a sweeter price point. So, and my background is from social media and, and, um, and digital marketing. So I kind of wanted to find a product that fitted well into the digital e-commerce space that started growing a few years back. So, so we, we pretty much combined our experiences and, and our competences and Jimmy was the result. So, I mean, with his creative mindset and experience, it, it was pretty obvious that we wanted to, to position ourselves the way we did and uh, 
content and storytelling and, and the entire brand story has been super important to to establish Jimmy so so fast. So that's pretty much the the um, ingredients that we're working with. So the consumer behavior is very important to you and your brand, right? So you stick very much to that, would you say? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and I mean, consumers are so much more uh, well educated and also they're they're requiring much more now than they did five or ten years ago because the internet is making things so so easy to access and and uh, with social media and everything consumer consumers has a great voice and a power that they can can use in order to let friends families or whatever know uh, their, their their input so it's it's important to to listen to the consumers and really put them in the first place. I think it's very challenging, especially because the action of consuming or the consumer's action because of social media is changing so fast. So I think it's a pretty, pretty uh, hectical, I guess, and very, yeah, very important though, but um, a, a good task to follow up on. Uh, Kira, uh, you were working as a fashion editor since several years. So you often work with eyewear brands of all sizes, I guess. And apart from that, you also co-founded the independent magazine Envy. Can you see parallels with Daniel's experiences from a brand perspective? Um, yes, definitely. And I also think it's super interesting how, how Mirko defines like um, the, the label independent, which can mean so much uh, at the moment. For us, it has definitely been a similar journey in kind of uh, deciding to be independent is a commitment and um, kind of a decision to not aim for mass taste in a sense. So that means that you have to approach things differently and that is a challenge, but it also has the opportunity to really tie in much more closely with how you define your own target audience. So I think that is the beauty of it, that you don't have to cater to everyone and you can work very closely to the core of what your brand is. And I think that applies to us as a magazine, but definitely also in the development of a new brand. Um, I think it illustrates how important it is to, at the moment when you're coming up in a marketplace that is quite saturated as it is with eyewear, to really um, kind of have this perspective of where you want to go with this brand. And I think it ties back into what has been becoming so important, which is more this idea of what kind of values and purpose does the brand stand for and uh, really taking a closer look how that uh, kind of connects with your audience. So I think for us, that is the case as well. This kind of super close look at who is this audience and how can we basically fulfill their needs. And I think that has a lot of similarities to a product and Indie is a brand um, just like um, basically a more, more product driven uh, brand would be. So um, I think um, we also touched on these points of storytelling and content. And I think that ties in very much into how can we fulfill the need of the audience and the target audience that we define for ourselves and how can independent brands um, basically push the boundaries a little bit of, of how that can look and what they can really do to service their audience. Yeah, I also think it's really nice to, as an independent brand or independent person, um, to follow up your own creativity and your own thoughts and to be independent from bigger, the bigger picture. But on the other hand, it, it comes along with the commercial side, right? So you guys, I just throw the question into this room, uh, this digital room. So please just hop in if you want to. How do you feel about the, the clinch between follow up, uh, following up on your independent thoughts and ideas and creativity versus the commercial part, which is definitely something we all need to look out, out for still? like that's challenging sometimes right yeah i mean uh, especially with with a very special year uh, behind us with covid and everything our product portfolio pretty much consists of sunglasses and uh, with travel restrictions etc it was indeed a very tricky balance to find the commercial side and to combine it with the 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 brand perspective and our dna pretty much so uh, yeah it's definitely challenging and I think that putting the consumer in the first room makes it gives you a lot of the answers because they 
they set the trends, they know what they demand. And that pretty much goes hand in hand with commercial part. I mean, if you can offer a product, a service and an overall experience that goes in line with your brand DNA and with the customer expectations, then I think you'll be the winner pretty much. And I mean, comparing comparing our product category with other categories, we see that brand is becoming even more uh, important uh, as internet continues to develop and everything because there's so many e-commerce platforms and social media and influencer quick fixes that you can use in order to grow and scale your business. But in the end of the day, <laughs> your brand and your identity is, is what you have left. So we think it's more important now than ever, especially with a pandemic and with a tricky financial situation across the globe. I totally yeah. agree. Yeah. I would also um, agree in a sense that for one, the marketplace for most things is still big enough for a niche to make a difference. And you can create um, your own space within that and still be commercially successful. I mean, for us, we definitely choose a route that is like very much into the avant-garde field and it's important for us to collaborate with artists and people from the fashion art and cu culture world within that um, but basically this is always translating also in a commercial sense because um, I think yeah everyone can really thrive within their own field in their own segment. I hit, hit one, one additional question um i have too many so many questions but so the first one is you that's how i understood you kira in the beginning that you said okay it's, it's much more in, in a, um, a purpose-driven or inside out approach for the indies right you have something that you want to tell and, 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 and for a different audience and that's what you do right you don't look at as much on on what's hot or not uh, as a trend but 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 your own perspective is, is more important uh than just doing what what whatever is a mega trend, right? And um, it, it, is that how I did I understand you correctly? Yeah, I mean, I would say uh, the longer I am working within this field and and collaborating with a lot of um, brands, the one that are really true to their DNA are the ones that actually don't look so much left and right. The, those are the ones that are very much informed by the team and the, the dynamic within that. So. I think that is definitely uh, a real strength to to have that, that defined within your core. So in, in, in things, and in, in, in then I had one question to Daniel. <laughs> Sorry, Lena. But, Don't but, worry, it's our chat. And maybe you can show some products, whatever. I, but I I found Chimi, I were, they, they really have whatever, not only an edginess in terms of positioning, but also they, they are quite quite expressive the, uh, um, without being extreme. And then also you have those color schemes that I would think you would recognize from afar, right? Uh, uh, how do you, Daniel, how do you, I mean, how would you maybe define what what what, what your brand stands for right now? And, and, and is it something that, that your designer co-founder or your internal design team, how, how much are they looking at trends and how much do they have their own style that they that they know this is what we're going to do yeah great question and uh, we have been dividing it into two different segments pretty much so we use what we call a core collection which is basically our evergreens and they don't change too often and first and foremost we see that i mean we have a product that people purchase pretty much on a yearly basis but not too often so we want to keep uh, to keep our line straight and make it easy for them to come back for their favorites or to to switch their favorite pair up for a more colorful style. So that also ties up to our idea very much from the beginning that we we um, we thought it was tricky to find nice sunglasses. It was expensive or it was limited uh, or, or whatever. And so I, our idea from the very beginning has been to offer a wide range of colors, 10 to be precise. Uh, and on the other angle, we have our style. So we have 10 styles and 10 colors just to make it easy for the customer to understand our offering and, and to make them see the the, the planogram that, that we showcase both in store and online. It makes it very 
it makes it very clear what we do offer. Um, so that's one thing, and that's our kind of sustainable connection that that isn't uh, changed too often. Uh, and then we have our Chimmy Labs, and those are the styles that um, we want to express ourselves in a more creative way than we do through the Evergreen Collection. So, so we're using our labs to both collaborate with stores cool people or, or retailers or whatever. Um, and then we're doing them to, to kind of widen our range and reach new audience that new audiences that we can't reach or that we aren't reaching through our core collection. So we're pretty much dividing it into core and labs. So, so we do both. Can you show something? Yeah, sure. Uh, this actually our core collection was uh, it has been the same for five years, so it was updated only a month ago. And this is my personal favorite from the from the new core collection. It might be tricky to see here, but the model is called the color is ginger. Sorry, it's gray. So we call all all colors are named the, the color they actually are. So our black glasses are called black, and our gray glasses are called gray. And this model is called O five. So. Uh, I usually don't do this, but I'm <laughs> going to show how it looks on. So this is my favorite style from the new core collection. Um, and then we have some, we're working more with metal frames this year. So we haven't been doing too much with uh, with metal or steel as a um, um, as components, but now we're doing more, more and more metal frames. So this is actually a classic round metal frame that we're launching tomorrow. And then we're having a limited uh, steel launch that we're doing in a few weeks. A bit more crazy, maybe not my cup of tea, uh, but a uh, very cool one indeed. So we're really trying to to combine the the classics and the the, the crazy parts together, uh, and I think that's. Um, something that that can make us interesting from a consumer perspective. Um, so yeah, evergreens and limiteds. It's a great combination. Super nice. Congrats on the new collections coming out. Um, I was just interested, um, Hira, maybe you can take the, que um, the question or anyone else who would like to answer, but um, due to globalization, it's like thankfully possible for small and independent brands to be visible. So I think that's that's a huge plus and, and really great to give small brands chances and small brands with independent views to give like visibility and a chance to put themselves out there. But on the other hand, I guess for you also, um, Kira, or everyone else actually, um, um, also Mirko for buying, I think it's quite challenging to, to have an overview about so many different brands and especially if you want to push like the independent ones, right? And you want to focus on that because of the globalization and digitalism, there are, I think, much more, more and more new brands coming up. So how is it possible to have an overview? How do you work there? Um, is it ever possible to have a full overview over anything that happens on the social media space or the, uh, like basically the, the online space? Um, I think it, it comes back to this um, element of storytelling and how do these brands manage to push through and uh, kind of grab your attention with something that aligns with either your values or it might be areas like sustainability um, where, you know, brands can really communicate how they tackle this like huge topic and what's important to them, what kind of goals they're setting or that can be creative collaborations. So I would say the ones that kind of go the extra mile and coming back to this point of um, really having, engaging with their audience in a sense and um, having not really just talking about the product with their audience, but having them be part of um, the process behind it. I think that makes a difference and that's how, how brands grab your attention. Can I, can, no, I, I, I was interested to see your point, Mirko. How do you? Yeah, and I, and I, and I, I will give it, but, but also have, I have a follow up question for Kira as well. And I hope I remember your question. But the, 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 
I mean, if if you if you if you want to know everything that's going on for everyone, right? Uh, that's quite challenging, right? Uh, in a globalized world. But if you if you if your your target group is so clearly defined, right? I mean, if it's you can define it so narrowly that 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 actually you you almost know everything that's going on. You just need to uh, gather that real quickly and 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 and. and and communicate it, right? And 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 and, and curate it and communicate it. So how how would you how where are you, right? How 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 narrow is it that you say, uh, you know, in terms of what you can know? And and maybe number one and number two is what would be your sources of? Okay, this is popping up news. Is it is it Twitter or whatever, right? What are your sources to know what's going on for that target group? And I'll, and I'll also answer. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would say for us. It's a very closely connected community. I would say like the international um, fashion and art and culture crowd, it sometimes it feels like a village. And um, even though there is so much coming in, you kind of have a few faces that also define where we're moving towards when it comes to trends or new brands that are being introduced. So I think the way we approach it is really with this very community driven approach of um, having like a, as you said, very strongly defined idea of who the indie family is and what is relevant to them. What do they need? What are they interested in? Um, and we kind of have this network where all these, this input and new information comes to us in, in a sense through these people that we pre-selected. It's, uh, yeah, it's kind of a network intelligence of sourcing new things and spotting new brands um, that, uh, yeah, is super interesting to see as it develops and uh, as new social media platforms come in. Is it connected to social? I mean, how do you, how do you, how do you, is it, so is it, is it the internet that, that, that connects you or is it, is it, is it, is it, is it a, is it a bar? I would say, I mean, for the last year and two months, <laughs> we were only able to to get our input, um, yeah, in a very pre predefined way. So I think it has it has made these channels even more narrow in a sense of what inspires us and how do we receive new input. Um, but yeah, I would say social media plays a big role in how we connect with our community. And it's kind of where most of this input comes from. Yeah. Also, I, I guess it's also a matter of, although you are an independent magazine, you already have a very pretty solid standing in the industry. So that's also a privilege, obviously, to have. Um, so people come to you, I guess, as well. You don't only have to reach out. People know who you are and they know your visions and they know your target group, I guess, by seeing how you put yourself out there. So yeah. I guess that's also a nice thing to have people coming to you, right? Yeah, but I would say for us to discover brands through our family and our network is the closer way to our heart than for us to receive a press release on something or um, yeah, other ways that we might be, be uh, made aware of something new. Um, so yeah, that's, you always have to have your eyes open and kind of yeah, curate what's what's coming in Mirko, i'm coming back to you don't forget <laughs> um, i wanted to actually know how how you deal with how do you do your selection for independent brands that you involve in mid specs there are so many yes but how do you what are the criteria well i um i mean we, we let i would say the the the, the independent uh, uh, assortment has been has been growing really in the last month and and and, and what you'll see is uh that uh, through the look and feel of the website and also the curation around independent brands it's it's uh we will we will invest quite a bit into it and, and you'll see the changes on the site and in our stores and uh, um as we speak but um but yeah it's the answer is very similar, right? It, it is. I think it is a lot uh, through the relevant platforms uh, on the internet. I mean, uh, Jimmy, I, I actually met, I think, in a in a store, uh, not the internet, but in a store. I think it was either uh, so uh, um, Soto uh, in Berlin when I was still there, uh, uh, or it, it was in in. Uh, 
in uh, uh, in Palma de Mallorca in, in uh, Rialto. I, I I don't know. It, 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 I, I saw Jimmy there, and then I immediately checked it out because I liked the the the, the eyewear and checked it out on Insta, obviously. And and then and and then you 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 find it here, there, and there, and there, and then you say, okay, they, they're really doing something special. They're all over the place. By the when you start looking for them, they're all over the place and uh, in the right places, right? And um, um, thanks. And and um, yeah, and I think that's just it. There are just a few. Ta- I think there's a few taste makers on the on the internet uh, and 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 a, and a few platforms that know really well what resonates. And and if you follow those, and uh, it's it's really it's less the traditional industry fairs or whatever where you go from booth to booth and see if you find an interesting label. I think that's that's once been the case. I think there's one indie label that I really like a lot from from Italy. It's called LGR, much more traditional in the approach. But uh, but that was actually no even even that. If I think about it, I I went to those booths at a fair. To get in touch, but but it all was also also uh, uh, the internet that, that brought me to them. So long story short, I think that's 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 really it. Follow follow what's 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 happening on the internet, and then you have a few stores or platforms that also give inspiration. Cool. Okay, I think uh, we're coming to an end actually now. Um, if no one else wants to join anything, um, thank you so much for being here today i'm very happy that we have met even digitally and uh, it was great uh, to talk to you a bit about independent brands because um, i think it's a very interesting topic and um, i'm wishing you all the best and if you want you can uh, watch our other expert talks obviously online as well and um, other than that from my side thank you so much and have a good day thanks everyone thanks lena you. Thank you, Lena. You were a great host, and thank you, everyone. <laughs> Bye. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye.